February 1923 here in this column where my mouse is uh, highlighting right here. You have 577,000 paper marks to an ounce of gold, down to 438,000 in March 1923. But you know what the gold bugs were saying at that point. Oh, why did we buy gold? It's not doing well, and it's been down for a month, and we're having so much losses, and it's so horrible. Yeah, well, that didn't last much longer either. Hey, guys. Raf here from The Endgame Investor. Today, we're going to talk about central banks buying gold. Does it mean anything for their currencies, aka money substitutes, gold substitutes? And the quick answer is no, it doesn't. It doesn't help a currency necessarily when a central bank buys gold. And I'll show this to you logically and graphically. This week's video is brought to you by my subscribers to the Endgame Investor. Click below in the description for a two week free trial or become my patron on Patreon where you will get a once a week weekly video. Well, once a week means weekly. Yeah. You'll get a weekly video on economics and monetary policy from a biblical perspective. And this week, we're going to talk about the falling of the manna from heaven and what that has to do with trickle down economics, as the Republicans so ineptly call it. And you can become my patron for as little as $30 a year or $3 a month. Not trying to get rich, but I am trying to stay completely independent and able to withstand all governmental pressure from any direction. Okay, sir, now we will begin to proceed to obtain your IQ and aptitude tests. Okay, sir, this is to figure out what your aptitude's good at and get you a jail job while you're being a particular individual in jail. And thankfully, you guys have brought me through the last two and a half years. Spectacularly, I must say, you're doing well. Thank God and thank my supporters. So central banks, people are making a fuss about the fact that it's the biggest, 2022, I think, is the biggest year of central bank gold buying since 1968. We happy? Yeah, we happy. And that's supposed to be a headline. And yes, it is exciting and it's interesting and I don't think it should be ignored, but it does not mean that these central banks are saving their currencies not in the least. Now, logically, why is that the case? It doesn't matter how much gold is on a central bank balance sheet if that gold is not convertible into the liability of the currency itself. If the central bank, in other words, is using the gold as a way to tinker around with an exchange rate, then there is no meaning or very little meaning to the gold on a central bank balance sheet. If the central bank wants to utilize its gold reserves to stabilize its currency, it has to make it convertible to the public at a fixed ratio. Well, the central bank balance sheet is the asset side of the liability that is the currency. They are both sides of the same coin, the coin being the balance sheet. Assets on one side, liabilities on another side. Just like you have assets and liabilities, your assets back your liabilities. If you have debt, that debt has value in accordance with the assets on the other side of your balance sheet that you can pay that debt with. Well, with central banks, it's a little bit different because they have debt on both sides of their balance sheet. The liability, the currency itself is debt because it's backed by debt, which is the government debt that is on their balance sheet. As long as that debt can be paid, then that debt has value in the sort of Mobius strip circle of monetary policy that eventually will fold in on itself. But once it does, the only thing left is the gold on the central bank balance sheet, which is when all of the liabilities that remain in circulation have to be backed by the remaining hard assets on the central bank balance sheet. So in that sense, if a central bank has zero gold on its balance sheet, its currency will fall to zero. If a central bank does have some amount of gold on its balance sheet, then when the debt becomes worthless, then the exchange rate between the gold on its balance sheet and the remaining currency units in circulation will be backed on a 100% basis, and that is a gold standard set by the market. So yes, it's not that gold on a central bank balance sheet is useless or has no meaning, but it does not necessarily mean that if a central bank accumulates gold, that its currency will be strengthened. Now, I'm going to show this to you graphically in charts that really cannot be disputed because they're so freaking obvious. 
First of all, this is the article that people are quoting, that the gold bugs are quoting, and yes, it is exciting, and I'm happy about it, but let's put it into context. Central banks, this is from gold.org, the Gold World Gold Council. Gold demand trends full year 2022. Central bank demand totaled 1,136 tons in 2022, the highest level of buying. Geopolitical uncertainty and high inflation were highlighted as key reasons for holding gold. Three, buying was primarily from emerging market banks, including Turkey and China. And here you have a nice little graph showing that central bank gold buying was the highest on record at 1,136 tons. You have that nice little bar here, and we're supposed to be all excited about this and happy, and there is reason for that. However, I love gold so much that I even lost my genitalia in an unfortunate smelting accident. Hence the name gold member it mentioned turkey and china well let's go to turkey and see what its gold buying has accomplished turkey first of all in 2022 we have here january 2022 394.2 tons up to 541.8 tons uh as of january 2023 so that is uh whatever 150 something close to that 150 tons and uh, that is the most of any central bank this year. Uh, but really, it's not that much relative. It's, it's, it's still down relative to July 2020, 583.3 tons. So yeah, um, what we see here is that Turkey is not buying gold in order to support its currency. It is rather using gold as a way to tinker with its exchange rate. And how is that working out for Turkey? Well, if we go to Turkey and we go to currency, and we see here... Uh, you know, pretty obvious signs of hyperinflation. We're now at 18.86 lira to the dollar. Clearly, the gold buying has not helped its currency one bit. Now let's step back from Turkey for a minute and see who has been buying. If we go to this Excel spreadsheet that I could jiggered from uh, data from tradingeconomics.com on gold reserves for each country. So this is the change since December 2022 to January 2023. So we have here the leaders the accumulators of gold, this is by tons, uh, China, 63 tons, Turkey, 53 tons, United Arab Emirates, 15.36 tons, Kyrgyzstan, 6.2 tons, Uzbekistan, 6 tons, and Qatar, 3.12 tons. So having that in mind, we can look up the United Arab Emirates, number three, we already looked up Turkey, we'll deal with China in a minute, Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan. So let's start with the United Arab Emirates. United Arab Emirates, pretty impressive gold accumulation here by the central bank. We have zero tons and looks like 2014, 2015, up to now 80 tons, and there's been some recent buying. How recent? Well, uh, the last few months, we have from July to January, 55 tons to 90 tons, so some major buying in the last few months. And what about its currency? Well, its currency is a different story. If we go to the currency, we can see here that it is pegged basically to the US dollar at three point, whatever that is, 3.6726. And it's been pegged since 1992, or that's as far as back as we have data going on here. So if you have a currency peg and the and the Durham is pegged to the dollar, then its gold reserves are going to be irrelevant. So why is it using gold? Uh, as another way to sustain the peg, possibly. Well, now let's go to Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan has also been slowly accumulating gold. It has 395.94 tons, according to this. Back in, in 2018, it had 334, 336 tons. So there has been some accumulation. Hasn't been much. Has it helped its currency? No. If you go to markets and you go to currency and you zoom out to a maximum chart, you can see here that the Uzbekistani SOM, its currency unit, is also in a hyperinflationary freefall since 2017, up from 3,133 SOMs per dollar to 11,345. Same story here. Now, if we look at the basket case, the tragic story of Venezuela, and this tab over here, we have the Venezuelan gold reserves. From 2004, we were at 350 tons. And they sold almost all of their gold here to pay their bills and support their currency back in 2015, 2016, when the Bolivar was in hyperinflationary collapse. Has it helped that currency? Absolutely not. If you zoom out, yes, this is a hyperinflationary collapse right here. 
Weimar. Remember Weimar, this is the chart of the paper mark in the 1920s, 1920 to 1923, 1914 to 1923, of the Weimar uh, mark versus gold. You see here, there are two points where the price of gold went down in paper marks for, you know, a measured period of time, not too long. It was from 1920, the beginning of 1920 to the middle of 1920, and from 19, beginning of 1923 to about February or so, 1923. The numbers, that was the time when the central bank of Weimar was selling its gold reserves. So what happened? Gold temporarily went down in mark terms, but then uh, you no, know, it didn't save anything. It just delayed the inevitable. So you have here in December 1923, 1920, ah, December 1919, the end of 1919, 967 marks per ounce of gold down to 807 in June 1920. And you have the same thing from February 1923. That was just a few months before the ultimate hyperinflation. February 1923 here in this column where my mouse is uh, highlighting right here. You have 520, 577,000 paper marks to an ounce of gold, down to 438,000 in March 1923. But you know what the gold bugs were saying at that point. Oh, why did we buy gold? It's not doing well, and it's been down for a month, and we're having so much losses, and it's so horrible. Yeah, well, that didn't last much longer either. Now, what about China. China is buying a bunch of gold, apparently, and people are speculating as to how much it has. Well, Here's the thing about China. Its currency supply, the yuan, is basically pegged to the dollar as well within a certain exchange rate. And since China's economy, as it is currently structured, is entirely dependent on exports to the United States, which is why they have to keep the exchange rate with the dollar in, within certain windows or it destroys the way that they make money these days, which is why they've piled $3 trillion in their basement. China has inflated its currency much faster than the US dollar in order to maintain this exchange rate. Let's go to its money supply. This is the Chinese money supply from 2002, 1990 something, or whatever it is. So I did the calculations here and from 2000 to now, the Chinese yuan supply has expanded by about six times, which is about twice as fast as the US money supply, as the dollar supply has been expanding. Now, if you look at China's gold supply, or the Chinese central bank's gold supply, the People's Bank of China, the gold supply or the gold reserves of the, of the central bank of China have expanded from uh, about 500, maybe a little less than 500 to about 2,000 tons now. So let's say roughly four times. So less than the amount of inflation of the currency. So if a central bank makes its currency convertible into gold, that means inflation stops, which means its entire economy has to be restructured. This is possible for economies like Russia uh, because they are so isolated already, but it's not very possible for economies like China, which are dependent upon the supply chain structure that currently sustains it. When the Brondo stock suddenly dropped to zero, leaving half the population unemployed, dumb, angry mobs took to the streets, rioting and looting. Why is this happening? I, I think it's because we switched to water, but I mean, this is all your fault? This is Rafi with the Endgame Investor. Hoping you enjoyed this installment of the Endgame Investor YouTube channel. And I'll end with this thought, keep stacking, because knowing central banks, they're going to sell all the gold they're accumulating now. And if they're going to sell it, the responsible people like us should be the ones to buy it.